Hi folks, we're gonna take a look at number 10 on page 300. So they want us to solve this equation uh, for x values between zero and two pi. Okay, so hopefully you uh, recognize this as looking like a quadratic trinomial. So I'm gonna factor the left-hand side as a trinomial. Right-hand side already has got zero on the other side. So again, remember the trick of re re replacing sine x by some other variable time, like z. So you could rewrite this as two z squared plus z minus one might be easier to do the factoring. But here, I'll do that uh, without doing the change of variable. So I'm going to break this up. So I've got 2 sine squared. So I know I'm going to have to have 2 sine squared, sorry, 2 sine x and sine x, which will give me 2 sine squared. And here, well, the only thing that multiplies to 1 is 1 and 1. So it's just a matter of determining the um, operation. So here, since I needed to add up to positive sine x, it's going to be positive 2 minus 1 and then equals zero. All right, and so now I can uh, make both of these equal to zero. So if I solve the first one, I end up with sine x equals one half. And here, if I solve sine x plus one equals zero, I have that sine x can be equal to negative one. All right, so I've accomplished step one of solving a trigonometric equation, which was to uh, isolate um, into a, a singular uh, trig expression equal to some number, all right? And I notice that both of these uh, are gonna correspond to special angles, all right? So, so to solve the first one, well, what angle gives me a sine value of one half? Well, that's just gonna be pi over six because y value of one, r value of two is pi over six. And of course, uh, instead of using uh, the related angle identity, I'm just gonna use my knowledge of um, uh, special angles to figure out that the other answer is going to be in the second quadrant, 5 pi over 6. Now, even if I had done pi minus pi over 6, I would have gotten to the same answer. So from this first one, we have x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. All right. Uh, now, since I'm only interested from 0 to 2 pi, those are going to be all the answers that I've got. All right. Now, from this equation here, sine x equal to negative one. So here, um, here this is, remember this is y over r, so my y value has to be negative one. So that means that I'm on the negative y axis. And of course that's uh, three pi over two. And that's the only value that sine has a minimum in one term. So I'm only gonna have one answer from this um, part of the equation. So three pi over two. And again, since I'm only interested in some zero to two pi, these are gonna be all my answers. Okay, they also ask us to verify graphically. So let's just see what this looks like graphically. So what I did is I plotted this equation here on Desmos, and then I just, it was a matter of determining where it was equal to zero. So if we take a look at this here, so I've got it plotted. And if we check our first answer, we see pi over six. Our second answer, five pi over six. And then our last one, 3 pi over 2. And those are the only answers between 0 and 2 pi. So we notice here this isn't exactly a sinusoidal function, but uh, you know certainly has some similarities. So we'll be looking at these types of functions in the next unit. All right, so just to recap, uh, your goal when solving a trig equation is to eventually isolate trig ratios. In this case here, we had to do that by first factoring it as a trinomial and then solving the two individual equations. From there, we used our knowledge of special angles to determine our answers. And since we were only interested in 0 to 2 pi, there were only these three solutions. Okay, that's it for this one.